Hello everyone, I'm Holoshidim with more Trigon Space Story. This video is a part of a short series that explores different aspects of the game. The previous one was about the ship and its systems, while this one will be about the crew. The crew can move across the ship, and we can use them to manage everything inside it. Crew members can mend certain systems to grant additional benefits. Repair damaged systems, seal breaches, extinguish fires, or repel enemy borders. Because of all these actions, having more crew is often beneficial, but there are also some downsides. Each crew member consumes a different amount of supplies depending on the race, and sometimes having too many of them can be unsustainable. Trigon has four different races. The humans, the Itari, the Raki, and the Terticans. Each one has its own stats and certain unique perks that can be acquired when they level up. The humans can be considered a fairly balanced race. They're not the best at anything, but they don't have any major downside. They have 100 health, deal a moderate amount of damage, regular repair speed, and they consume two supplies each day. Itari have 80 health, so they're more fragile than humans. However, they deal more ranged damage and they consume only one supply each day. The Raki have 125 health, and they deal more close combat damage, making them particularly strong fighters. The Raki downside is that they are significantly slower at repairing damage system and that they require 3 supplies per day, so it's very difficult to sustain many of them. The Terticons have only 50 health, which makes them incredibly fragile and they cannot attack. However, Terticons have other advantages. They're faster at repairing damage systems and they don't require any oxygen or supplies, so they're always a nice addition to the crew. During the run, each crew member acquires experience and eventually they will level up. When that happens, you'll be able to choose between two different perks. At level 2, the perks are fairly generic ones that are shared between most races, like an increased health or a reduced damage taken. At level 3, however, we'll be able to choose between two unique perks related to their specialization. Each crew member has a specialization, and that will improve their effectiveness when performing a specific task. Also, on their fourth and final level, the choice will be between two usable abilities that can be even more impactful than the previous perks. There are 7 different specializations, each one with some perks, abilities and regular bonuses. A crew member with a pilot specialization will grant a 12% increase evasion when manning the bridge. Especially early in the run, the pilot will provide a good portion of our total evasion, making it extremely valuable. The pilot to unique perks are Steady Hand and Natural Born Haze. Steady Hand increases our evasion even further as our ship takes damage, making it quite nice to increase our survivability when we are already in a bad spot. Natural Born Ace, instead, reduces the hull damage taken by half, which is even better since it can prevent, or at least delay, getting down to a low hull. The pilot's unique abilities are Battle Run and Maneuvering. Battle Run sets battle hours and the enemy ship evasion to zero. It's a very strong offensive ability, but we have to be careful since its downside can get us killed. Battle Run is particularly good in combination with a stealth module. We can use our stealth to avoid the first enemy volley, then activate the battle run while they are still recharging and unleash our own volley. This way we avoid the battle run downside, and since we cannot miss our shot, the volley should be enough to destroy the enemy ship or at least cripple their offense. Maneuvering instead drastically increases our evasion. Maneuvering is often less impactful than battle run, but since it doesn't have a downside, it's a good ability for every situation. The hyperdrive operator increases the hyperdrive charge rate by 50% when manning the hyperdrive. The bonus is not that important, but it can be useful in case we need to escape from a bad fight. The hyperdrive perks are Master Mechanic and Hyperdrive Expert. Master Mechanic provides one reactor to the hyperdrive, which is very valuable since the reactor is expensive. Hyperdrive Expert instead fully charges our hyperdrive at the start of the fight. Just like the bonus passive, this is often not that relevant since we want to destroy the enemy ship anyway, but it can save us from a bad situation. The hyperdrive operator unique abilities are Acceleration and Off We Go. Acceleration temporarily increases our evasion similarly to the pilot ability maneuvering. It's a weaker version, but it can be used in combination with maneuvering, giving us a stronger boost to our evasion. Off we go, instead, consumes some of our fuel to fully charge the hyperdrive. It's another way to escape from bad fights, but as before, we don't want to rely on escaping too much, otherwise we are just delaying the inevitable. The weapons operator charges the weapons 25% faster. Even if our weapons are ready to fire at the start of the fight, this bonus is still very valuable as it increases our overall damage in case we need to shoot multiple times. The weapons operator perks are Weapon Expert and Master Gunner. Weapon Expert has a 20% chance to fully charge our weapons after firing. 
It's a very good perk that boosts our overall damage, and if you're auto-firing, the two volleys will be unleashed at the same time, making it even better if you're trying to punch through enemy shields. Master Gunner instead grants a 20% chance to deal double damage. For overall damage is very similar to Weapon Expert, but this one in comparison becomes more effective when using weapons that consume ammo. In this case, firing a single projectile that deals double damage is better than using two missiles or bombs for the same effect. The weapon's operator abilities are Bullseye, Rapid Fire and Harpoon. Bullseye grants 100% accuracy for 10 seconds, which is essentially a battle run ability with no downside. It can easily be the strongest ability in the entire game, especially with a powerful weapon setup, like multiple missile launchers with Ragnarok missiles. With Rapid Fire, instead, weapons will charge twice as fast for a limited time. Overall, it's not as impactful as Bullseye, but it has a longer duration, making it more effective for prolonged fights. Harpoon resets the hyperdrive charge of the enemy ships. It's a minor utility, but it can be quite nice to support our borders, making sure that the enemy won't escape while their crew is still there. The shield operator increases the shield regeneration when the shield is still active, and then the shield recharge once they are depleted. It's a very strong passive, but shield operators have even stronger perks. The shield expert doubles the value of our shields, which is an incredible defensive tool since we don't even have to provide a reactor for the additional shield. Shield Master instead fully replenishes our shields once they recharge after going down. Overall not the strongest shield expert, but it can be very good when enemies have slow weapons or in combination with the stealth module since we will get more time for the recharge. The Shield Operator abilities are Shield Overload and Raise Shields. Shield Overload doubles the current and maximum shield value for 30 seconds. It's a very strong defensive ability that gets even better as we keep upgrading our shields. Raise Shields instead instantly recharges all our shields. Usually not as impactful as Shield Overload, but it's still a strong defensive ability. Shield Boost increases the shield regeneration speed. Overall, this is one of the best defensive abilities, since the boosted regeneration can keep our shields up against multiple volleys. Engineers can extinguish fires and perform repairs faster than anyone else. They don't have to be inside a specific room, but depending on their perks, they can provide other valuable benefits. Engineers have three different perks, Electrician, Technician and Master Engineer. Electrician provides two reactors to a system. Since upgrading the reactor is very expensive, this perk is extremely valuable as we can use our credits for something else instead. Technician protects the system from EMP damage, negating it completely. Not every ship has EMP weapons, but if they do, having a technician to protect our weapons or shields can be quite nice. Master Engineer instead increases the level of the system by 2. This perk can even push systems beyond their maximum level, allowing us to get even more shields or play certain weapon setups that otherwise wouldn't be possible. All these benefits are granted as long as the engineer stays inside that room and he doesn't have to mend the system. For example, we can have a weapons operator manning our weapons and an engineer in there to provide the other benefits. Engineers also have 5 different abilities. Shield block weakens the enemy shield for a limited time. It consumes some scrap and requires the engineer to be manning our sensors. It's a good offensive ability for any ship that uses plasma or laser weapons. Targeting system jammer is a similar ability, but it weakens the enemy weapons instead. It's often even better than shield block since it can make certain fights completely safe by preventing the use of some of their weapons. But in general, it gives us more time to inflict some damage or even destroy the enemy ship. Everything can be used from anywhere and it removes all the EMP from our ship. Sprinkler system instead extinguishes all the fires inside our ship, but the engineers must be in the airlock system. Both abilities are very situational, but they could always save the day. Backup power provides 4 temporary reactor power for 1 minute and it can be used from any room. As mentioned before, upgrading our reactor is quite expensive, so this ability gets a lot of value. Also, most fights are quite short and they will be over before the ability can expire, making the bonus reactor almost as good as the permanent one. The medic increases the effectiveness of the medbay when inside the system. It's comparable to a medbay upgrade, which is a very situational necessity. Its perks are combat medic and ship's doctor. Combat medic heals all the crew members that are in the same room as the medic, making it like a movable medbay. It can be quite good when dealing with enemy borders or to support our own. Ship's doctor instead provides a weaker heal across the entire ship as long as the medic stays in the medbay. 
This perk is not as impactful as the other, but the passive regeneration can still be useful if multiple crew members are taking damage in different rooms. The medic's abilities are treatment, resuscitation and emergency aid. With treatment, the medic acquires a stronger version of the combat medic, but for a limited time. Resuscitation can revive a dead crew member as long as the medic can reach its corpse. It's a very good ability, since sometimes the heals might not be enough to keep our crew alive. Emergency aid heals the crew member with the lowest amount of health that's in the medic's ship. It's another nice ability in case we cannot afford to move our crew to the medbay. Warriors deal more damage and take less damage. They're very good for dealing with enemy borders, but more importantly, they're incredible borders themselves. Their perks can increase their close combat or ranged damage, or even the damage that they deal to the enemy doors and systems. Usually, close combat damage is better than ranged damage since it's more common to fight enemies in the same tiles. System damage, however, is probably even better since the priority of our borders is to disable enemy systems. Once weapons are disabled, the fight is usually stabilized, so it doesn't matter if they need more time to deal with the rest of the crew. Their special abilities are Blasting Charge and Flashbang. Blasting Charge is an incredible offensive ability that can make our warriors invaluable borders by itself. It deals 30 crew damage and 30 system damage, allowing us to cripple enemy weapons, especially if we activate two of them at the same time after boarding with two warriors. The Flashbang instead stuns enemies in the room. It's considerably weaker and not as impactful as the Blasting Charge, but it can be a nice defensive tool against enemy borders. There is a lot more to learn and discover about the crew, but that's all for this video. The next one will be about the weapons and their different types, so make sure to subscribe to this channel to stay updated. You can find the links to the game in the Epic and Steam stores in the description. And you can find me at twitch.tv slash